This is Michael Bowen, who uh, probably needs no introduction, who mother needs no introduction. Oh, before I start on my talk, I think that maybe we should get Dr. Kelly to play the piano for us, since <laughs> I've given so much blood to the cause, you know? Because I hear you play really well. Over my dead body. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you your blood back. <laughs> I don't think you can. I'm pretty sure it's been used already. <laughs> All right, so as I said, I'm Michael Bowen, Shelley's son. Um, I'm 21 years old. I first showed symptoms at the age of one. I had a pounding heart. I was not eating or drinking a cough, and I just wasn't acting like a normal child should. Uh, birth syndrome was first suggested in 1990 with me by a genetic doctor and he didn't describe it as birth syndrome, but just as uh, another genetic disorder, because it wasn't called birth syndrome until I think 1996, 95, 93, okay. I went to Amsterdam in 1996. I met up with Dr. Barth, who then diagnosed me with the actual term birth syndrome. Um. Yes, in 1996, I was also taken off my heart meds, which then caused me to get more sick and cause, I think, arrhythmias. And I was suggested that I needed a heart transplant. But before we did that, that's when we went to Amsterdam, and Dr. Barth said, don't let anyone do it until I see him. I started middle school when we moved over to Perry, Florida, and I was told once again by a doctor that I needed a heart transplant. And because of this, I felt that I had a limited life expectancy. And since I felt this way, I just wasn't happy with life. I just sat around waiting for, you know, something to happen. And as time passed, uh, nothing happened. I went to Shands and met some good doctors there. Yes, brilliant doctors. That's, that's the one, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> They added me to a new medication, and I started getting better. And I felt that I had nothing left to fear from the disorder because everything was going well for me. As I started high school, I started to have more arrhythmias. And because of this, more brilliant doctors, once again from UF and Wolfson's Children's Hospital, Dr. Bryant there, suggested that I get an ICD placed in 2003. And after getting the ICD placed into my body, I felt safer because I knew that it was there if anything bad would happen. If my heart rate went too low, it would pace it. If it went too high, it would send a small shock, causing me to go back down to a normal rate. The ICD went off twice, I think, two years ago. And because of this, I realized that it was a good thing that I was in there because it was useful. My heart rate was increasing because I was trying a new medication, I believe, and because of this, it was just a lifesaver, basically. I'm now 21. I am learning about my limitations of birth. I'm trying to figure out what I can do, what I can't do. I'm comfortable with my life now. I'm able to go out, hang out with some friends, just act like a normal kid, basically. And I plan on trying to make my transition to an adult doctor. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to do that without too much hard work. I've learned to communicate with my doctors a lot better since middle school. Because I know that they're there to try to help me. So if I tell them what's wrong, I'm able to, they're able to help understand and discuss things with me. I attended college or a community college for a semester and a half, but I stopped going due to the fact that I had some medical issues. But I plan on going through and continuing with college and trying to get a higher education and maybe get a job as a photographer or I would like to work with child life development. I plan on trying to live a normal life as I grow older, you know, have a family, have kids get a house, and stuff like that. Any questions? <laughs> yeah.